That's great. Welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham Show. Hello, beautiful friends. We are still in the midst of summer, and I don't know about you guys, but my world seems to be just flying by, and all the fun has been had, and I'm feeling a little bit excited for the fall. And today's guest is actually launching a, a new program, special program, in the fall that I am excited to share with you because I want you to be seen as in demand. And how can you be in demand? Well, one way is speaking. Back in episode 206, I interviewed Mara Mee Gallagher, and you can go back and listen to her Com her conversation with me because we talked about leverage leveraging speaking for financial freedom. But today we're going to talk more about a methodology to help you be in demand as a speaker, but not only that, but really create your framework for your signature talk. How do you become a speaker? Why is it important to become a speaker? And how does the world of speaking even work? So we're going to talk about all of these great things, but I really think you're going to enjoy our conversation. And then maybe if you feel like you're being called to be a speaker and present your message on stages, Lori Ann's program may be just what you're looking for. All right. Without further ado, Lori Ann Morabito, welcome to the Robin Graham show. Thank you so much. I was, I've, I've been so looking forward to uh, our conversation. <laughs> yes. I, we're talking it, about my favorite subject. <laughs> Right, exactly. I know. And I had the great pleasure of interviewing with you on your show and talking about how speaking has helped me in my business. And so I'm excited to dive into this topic today because as I shared with you when I interviewed on your show and I've shared with the listeners before, public speaking used to be a major crutch for me. I couldn't do it. I had such paralyzing anxiety over speaking. And what I've learned is that when you're passionate about something, you can talk about it with ease and grace. And it's really tapping into what is your purpose? What are you an expert at? And then showcasing your authority. And when you are that authority, people see you as that, and they're not in the audience questioning. Ugh. Who does she think she is to be up there talking? They actually appreciate you and are excited to hear your message. So before we dive in, will you just tell the listeners a little bit about you and what brought you to this point of your journey? Absolutely. Thank you. What a lovely introduction also. I'm a reformed, painfully shy girl who accidentally became a professional speaker. And I just... I said yes before I was really ready or really understood what I was doing. And so I've learned along the way, you know, different different tips and techniques that worked and what didn't work. And now today what I do is I help, I work with coaches and consultants and I help them craft memorable presentations that positions them as the expert and also gets them clients and positions them as that person of authority. And I think one of the first things that we should chat about is what is being an in demand? I mean, that's what my podcast is. That's what my program, like that's the title that I've, I've really gravitated towards because it's, if you're a web designer, you don't want people saying, I need to find a new web designer. I need, you know, like, do you know any web designers? You want them to call you out by name you know, get me, you know, like, for example, if you need a business coach, it's like, God, where do I find a business coach? Well, no, no, you need, you, you want your best friend saying, you need to call Robin Graham. That like, end of story, like, they just know you by name. And so that's what being in demand is when people don't question, it's just like, here's who you're going to call. So that's mm. what, you know, so that's, that's just to start us off with. But Speaking is a form of visibility. And if we don't get seen, how is anybody ever going to hire you? You know, I mean, like you started speaking, you know, like, at, and refresh my memory. You just kind of like said, yes, okay, I'll do this. And I can't, can't remember the story that you shared on my yeah. podcast. 
so yes, a- absolutely. The word yes. And you mentioned that before too, that you said yes before you were ready. I said yes before I was ready and I was still terrified, but I did the thing. And I think if there's anything you take away listeners, it's that say yes before you're ready, because the reality is it's never going to be perfect. You can question how good you're going to be until the cows come home, so to speak. But the reality is it's not going to be perfect and you might make a mistake. But when you approach it from a place of, I'm not going to just sit and memorize this. I'm going to speak from my heart, from the knowledge in my head with a positive mindset. I'm going to be brave. I'm going to put on my big girl panties. <laughs> I'm going to stand on that stage and deliver what the audience needs. You can actually do it with so much more ease and grace, but with so, so much less anxiety. And I know that sounds absolutely crazy, but if I can do it, I promise you, you can do it too. And like Lori Ann said, we really do need to be visible. And, you know, we talk so much on the show about not being on social media. Speaking is a phenomenal way to be in front of other people. And Lorianne, I know you have this philosophy too, that you could speak from a stage in front of hundreds of people, but you could also speak in front of a small group. But podcast guesting is also a form Mm -hmm. of speaking. So let's talk about your framework. Let's talk, or your, your methodology. Let's talk about that a little bit so that we can give the listeners some real, um, like takeaways in terms of, okay, if you're, if you're ready to become more visible, you don't want to be on social media all the time and you want to start getting your message out there. Here's how you can do that. Absolutely. Um, I want to share my funny story though, first, because just like you, I said yes before I was ready. As a matter of fact, I said yes. I like shook my head yes. And inside I was like, what are you doing? You are shy. You don't speak in front of people. <laughs> but self-integrity was is is and was back then one of my highest values. So if I said I was going to do something, I showed up and I did it. And the funny thing is, is like, I never thought about the afterwards. I never thought about like, what if somebody asked me a question that I can't answer? What if somebody says like, who are you to be speaking? I just got up there and I served. And I I just want to share with everybody, like I turned into the, what I call the college professor. I just started teaching, which means there was no beginning. There was, so there was no warm up. I just did the middle section, which also means there was no ending. So Everybody just hear how I ended this. I said, okay, I'm done now. And if you want to talk to me, I'll be in the back of the room. That was my ending. You know, and like, (laughs) I laugh about this now because it's like, like, like I would never end that way now, but I just wanted, I didn't know how to end, but I had just got up there and I served and I spoke from my heart. You know, one of the things is you have to get out of your head and into your heart. So stop thinking too much about like you and think more about like, how can I serve this audience? So if I can transform from that to what I am today and every speech, like I get a little better, I get a little better, you know, even podcast guesting. Oh my God. The first time I podcast guests, it was terrible. Anyways, I mean, terrible, like as in compared to today, you know, but Mm -hmm. You got to do the reps. You got to go to the gym. You got to do the reps. That's all there is to it. So Mm -hmm. my methodology is what's your story? Figuring out what your story is, because it's your story, your transformation, how you help people, how you came to being in this position, whatever your business is to helping people. Like what's your story? And the more every day it is, the better. Because so many people say, yeah, but I didn't climb Mount Everest. And I'm like, thank goodness. Because if you climbed Mount Everest, yes, that's a major feat, but not a whole lot of people can relate to that. Not a whole lot of people can take a year off and, you know, fly across the world and, you know, and even just the expense of doing something like that, you know, that's unrelatable. But your everyday life, the challenges that you've overcome, the challenges that you've noticed, your own personal growth, your own personal journey, taking those stories 
and then sharing with the audience the lesson that you want them to walk away with. Now, that's the important part is to never assume your audience will understand the lesson that you want them to know. You really have to like point blank, what I want you to walk away with, what I want you to hear, what I want you to see with this story is, and you share the lesson. Now, the, now the great thing about that is that you can have a signature story that you use over and over and over again. And depending on what group um, and audience that you're speaking in front of, you can change the lesson so that it matches the speech, it matches the audience, they understand. And so what's the beauty of telling the same story over and over and over again? You get Confidence. really good. Yes, confidence, and you get really good at telling that story. Yeah. And you get known for that story. Yeah, I mean, you. I'm sure that you have some signatures, some stories that you tell over and over again. But it's mm -hmm. funny how I, like, I get asked a lot, yeah, but can I use the same story? I can't use the same story. Like I'm, I'm speaking to the same audience or I'm, I just spoke last week. And I always ask people like, what's your favorite movie? So Robin, what's your favorite movie? Pride and Prejudice. It's one of my favorite books. And then I love the movie too. And how many times have you read the book or watched the movie? Numerous. <laughs> there you go. Okay. And you know what the ending is. Yeah. Every time. But, yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's that, it's also that predictability. I mean, I've walked into places where people have said, are you telling that jackknife story? It's like, yeah, have you heard it before? <laughs> it's like, yeah, actually I am different lesson, but that's okay. So part of the, part of my methodology is like, what's your story? Because nobody can tell your story. Like you can tell your story. And there's always somebody in the audience and yeah, they might've heard some similar lesson, but it's going to be the way that you tell your story on that very day that it's going to be like, oh, and that's your story is what's going to get them to make that change, to make the move, to raise their hand, to take, just to take a step in the right direction that they've been wanting to, you know, maybe they've been stuck for who knows how long but your story mm -hmm. is going to move them that day. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about that for a second. So can you give us an example of a story and how do we tell that story? So it resonates best with the audience. Okay. I mean, we hear all the time, you know, you have to tell stories, you have to tell stories and listeners, I will link some episodes. Um, like Brennan McGowan talks a lot about storytelling and copywriting and I'll link that we've had brand storytelling. We've had, you know, um, in 232, Danielle Mendoza talked about storytelling. When you write a book, mm -hmm. even if it's a nonfiction and business book, you can write the stories. And she talks about in that episode, we talked about not presenting your story as beginning, middle, end, but changing it up a little bit. So I would love for you from a speaking perspective to tell us how you tell that story. Like what's the... <laughs> air quotes, magic with storytelling magic. for speaking. Yes. So with speaking, you want to take your audience on a journey with you. You want the audience to actually feel like they're in your story. So it's about, you know, it's about the pace that you tell your story, the pauses, the where you inflect things. And you don't want to do a play-by-play. -play. It's not I went to the grocery store because I had to pick up like milk and cheese and eggs and the kids didn't have anything, you know, but while I was there, I heard, you know, like my neighbor and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, to myself, she's going to say, you know, like, I'm going to run into her and we're like, cause I can hear her. She's in the next aisle. Okay. So that like, to me, like that's, that's a little bit of a play by play. Mm -hmm. I, you know, like, yeah. here's what I did X, Y, Z. You want to like, God, it was that time of the afternoon. And I didn't have anything for dinner. I didn't have anything planned. My day had been so busy. So I just knew like, let me just run into the market and just grab a few things. And I heard that voice, you know, that voice. It's like, you know, exactly who she is, the neighborhood gossiper. <laughs> and I, I'm now I'm like thinking, how can I get out of the store 
in under five minutes knowing she's here. Now you, with just those few sentences, and that's completely ad lib, just with those few sentences, you already know how I feel about the neighbor. You already know that she's a talker because now I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get out of the store in five minutes. So it's about just not, um, here's, here's the best way to describe it. In the speaking world, we say, don't let all the details get in the way of a good story. Mm-hmm. So that's I love where that. like, so no play by play. We want people to experience the story with you as you're telling it. So if you can experience the story again, you know, your audience will also feel it and experience it with you while you're telling. And the reason why we tell stories is, you know, Robin, you've got small kids. Did your kids ever say, mama, can you tell me a bedtime statistic? <laughs> no, it was always tell <laughs> Always, always tell me a bedtime my oldest, story. My oldest might have, <laughs> <laughs> but it's always tell I'm me kidding, a bedtime yeah. story. Yeah, yeah, exactly, it's, it's, exactly. We're so entertained by stories. I mean, look at the Budweiser commercials. That um, I mean, I haven't watched the commercials for, during the Super Bowl, but people would watch it just for those commercials. Oh yeah, the and Clydesdale. the Budweiser yeah. told a story. Yes, yeah. those Clydesdales. You know, the dogs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a less than 30 second commercial that tells a story. Mm -hmm. And you just, I love that. Yeah. I love that because it really builds that emotional connection, right. With the people you're speaking to. And you Mm -hmm. mentioned you want to be memorable. And when you tell those stories and you build that emotional connection, that I mean, that's marketing at the core. You're building that emotional connection through mm-hmm. stories and you're mm-hmm. you're communicating t- with your audience how you are that expert and authority through your story, whatever experience it is that you're weaving into the story to communicate that. Yes. So I always start with story, you know, telling your story and crafting, you know, like whatever your signature story is going to be, you know, and the whole point of speaking, you know, and by the way, there's like over 7,500 speaking events every single day. And that's just meetings and conferences that are looking for speakers every single day. Now we'll just divide that by 50. There's 50 States. That's 150 opportunities today and 150 tomorrow. And if you live close to the border, like I do to Massachusetts, I consider myself, I got 300 opportunities every single day to find the right audience to speak in front of. Now that doesn't include like the podcasting or guest speaking in masterminds, you know, and other, you know, high-end groups of, of, of people, but you want to grab their attention. So I just want to like share the different parts of a presentation. You have to grab people's attention. You have to give them a reason to put their phone down. You want to give them a reason to lean in and listen. And so once you've captured their attention, you need to explain to them, why should they listen to you? Because they're going to be skeptical if they don't know who you are. They're going to be crossing their arms. It's like, all right, you got my attention. But why are you an authority on this particular topic? And that's where you share your authority section. That's what I call it. It's you share why. And then there should be teaching. You know, you want to give really good value and your close and your call to action. But part of, you know, Robin, of my methodology is you always start with the end in mind. Like, what's your goal? When you're done speaking, this is the very first thing that you should be doing. When you're done speaking, what do you want your audience to think, to do, or to feel? differently. That's your goal. Start with your goal first. So once you know exactly what it is you want your audience to do or think or feel, what has to be in the presentation in order for that to happen? What do they need to learn? What do they need to know? What do they need to understand? And that's part of, this is all part of like my three C's. It's you want to be compelling, captivating, and most importantly, converting. You know, so what has to go in there? And so I, you think about these things as like a table, a table with three legs. 
So you're going to share a piece of information. That's the tabletop. This is the tip. What supports that tabletop from falling over? Those are the three pieces of information. It can be a story, a statistic, a case study, a metaphor, an analogy, but all of these things like, you know, can support that topic, that tip that you're sharing with the audience. So it's not just, I want you to, I want you to get out there and go speak more. Well, I'm going to share with you like these this different pieces of information. There's 7,500 speaking opportunities every single day. Yeah, Those that's are what you said, which blows my mind. <laughs> doesn't it? That's, yeah. that's 75 opportunities <laughs> for you to get in front of the right people. You know, like not every audience is the same, but it's also 7,500 meeting planners that are looking for somebody. So don't, you know, don't wait for them to come find you. You could knock on their door as metaphorically. And you're like, you're a lifesaver. Like really, that's what you speak about. Like we, we were just thinking about having somebody that speaks on that topic. You just mm -hmm. never know. So yeah, absolutely. That's, that's how, that's how you want to think of like your value section, because you do want to leave the organization, leave the group, you know, and have them feel like, wow, that wasn't a sales pitch. Like, I feel like I got something out of that, you know, and um, I don't know about you, Robin, but everybody who's in that audience, you know, is somebody, is somebody who said yes to spending time with you. Yes. I want to hear about this topic. Yes. I bought a ticket. You know, I'm spending time here. You know, there's so many reasons why people are there. You know, and it's not just because like, hey, I have nothing else to do because Lord knows we're all super busy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So let's let's talk for a second about um, how the speaking world works, because now we know the framework to <clears throat> include for our for our talk when we're going to mm -hmm. create it. We're going to use our stories. We're going to provide value. We're going to have a call to action and the close. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you listed out all of that in the three C's and that to me is very, very helpful. And I loved your analogy of the table. And I think that kind of gives a great guideline for someone to sit down and start writing with the goal in mind first. So let's talk about how the speaking world works. So if there's 7,500 opportunities a day, how do we, uh, how do we find the ones that are right for us? And what are there platforms we should be using? Like, tell us a little bit about how we become visible in the speaking arena. Absolutely. First off, is there a speaker in your bio? I mean, let the world know that you are available to be a speaker. Don't let people guess. Don't wait for people to come and ask you. So that's number one, I would put speaker in your bio. And on your website, if you've ever done any speaking, don't make a meeting planner hunt for your speaking page. Just have a speaking tab. You know, we always want to make it super easy for, for our, our clients, our customers. The second is, where are you already a member of? What associations do you attend that you have a professional membership to? All these different meetings that you might be attending or yearly conferences. Make a list of those. To me, this is your warm market. These are people who already would support you. They already know you. They already like you. They trust you. That if you were to ask them, like who's in charge of booking our meet our speakers, you know, who's in charge of our professional development, speak to that person and just ask. Don't say, hey, I'd like to be like the next monthly speaker. Just ask, what's the process for booking speakers? That's how it, but my approach to getting booked to speak is to opening the door to having the conversation, not here's all the wonderful things about me. And here's what I can talk about. It's just what's the process for booking speakers. You will learn a ton of information because I remember, you know, early on, I used to speak in the leadership um, in corporate engagement um, industry. And I would contact organizations. What's your process? And that's where I learned that sometimes people are, they were already working on a, the conference that was 18 months in advance, mm -hmm. that far in the future, not in six months, 
they're already like, we're, we're a year and a half ahead. That's, you know, d- yeah. depends on, on the size of, of the organization and the conference. So that's why I always say like, we want to open the door to having that conversation. And from there, it's about like, do you look like a speaker? You know, is there any place that I can hear you speaking? You know, whether it's podcast guesting, whether it's, you know, some live streams, do you have a YouTube channel? You know, I feel like all of these live streams, it's a great way for meeting planners to actually get to know you and see you speak because let's face it, sizzle reels are, you know, like they're cut up all of these, like, you don't have to have a speaker reel anymore. I think that there are so many different ways for us actually to share our knowledge and show our experience that I don't want people to feel intimidated. Like, yeah, but I don't have a speaker reel. So I guess I can't be a speaker. And yeah, you can. There's lots that's of other places point. that you can direct people to. Yeah, that's a really good point. Cause I don't have a speaker reel because mm-hmm. a lot of the places that I've spoken to didn't have a professional videographer. So if you don't, if they're not videoing you, how do you have, how do you get the real? Right, right. I, once I spoke for um, an organization, it was a great women's conference and they actually just brought in the local cable um, to actually film and because it was being aired at the same time. And I just asked the gentleman, I was like, Hey, can I get a copy of this? Mm -hmm. And so it's on my YouTube channel, but it's private. So if somebody says, Hey, I'd really like to see like a 15 minute segment of you speaking, I direct, like, I'll send them that link, but I don't really Mm -hmm. have like, I don't have an updated um, sizzle reel by any means. Yeah. And it hasn't prevented me from speaking either. So I just share that because I don't want people, I don't want that holding people back because there's so much opportunity that's out there for you to get in front of your ideal clients. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All so right. I would also, go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. I was going to say like, once you have that conversation they and, and they're interested, you know, I want you to act like the pro and just ask them like, okay, like, let's talk about what, what meeting. And if they say, well, we've got an opening next week and you don't feel ready you get to say, oh, I'm sorry, like next week doesn't work for me. How about next month? You you can just like take the reins and like this date works for me. I've got openings, you know, and it could be three months ahead. You know, if that's going to make you feel more comfortable about like, hey, this gives me like a few, couple of months to actually put a presentation together, especially if you're just getting started. What were you going to say? Because I kind of interrupted you. Actually, you answered my question. So. It was okay. great. That okay. was great. Yeah. You know, I, so, I can just, I can, I, I got a ton of information on all of this. So. I know you yeah. do. I know you do. And, uh, you know, I'm going to link the other episode too for, for when I interviewed Mara, because we talked about specific websites that you can go to, to look for mm-hmm. speaking engagements. And I know, um, listeners, you can just Google that too, like, you know, speaking opportunities and, and different conferences and, you know, even getting your name out there for magazines, journal publications, things like that. Anytime you can get your name out there, when you do propose uh, to speak, when people see that you've already been published, when people see that you've been a podcast guest, and this is where having a media page on your website is so important. So media and speaking so that they can see right away oh, she's credible. She's been on this show or she's done this interview or she did this presentation or she was featured Mm -hmm. in this magazine. So I encourage you because the other thing that does is from an SEO perspective, it lends to backlinks and that helps anybody that you've interviewed with, but also gives you more credibility as well from the SEO perspective. So I encourage you listeners to take this initiative, stop hiding behind the scenes and really take that step Mm -hmm. forward into becoming more visible to be in demand as the authority that you are and craft your signature speech using the tools, the the framework that Larianne just gave us, because I think it's so simple when you think of it from what is my goal and your call to action reiterates what that goal is and what you want them to do and how you want them to take action. 
Lorianne, this has been fabulous. Can you tell the listeners where they can learn more about you, connect with you, or even sign up for your launch of the in-demand methodology that you'll be launching this fall? Absolutely. My website is the best place for people to find me. It's speakandstandout.com. Uh, my podcast is in de- Be In Demand. And if you want to learn more about the In Demand Signature Speech Program that I was kind of like dabbling about, it is speakandstandout.com forward slash SS for signature speech. And during that program, it's a it's a three-month program that walks you step by step from really embodying the way that a speaker thinks and feels and shows up, that confidence, all the way to all the different weeks and the different segments, so that by the end of the program, you actually have a signature speech that you are proud to deliver. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Because it's nice to have somebody else's eyes on what you're doing, whether it's copy for your website or whether it's, you know, a blog post or a speech, it's nice to just have that comfort that, okay, I'm on the right track, or this is great, or yeah, I can do this. And that builds confidence, right? Yes, absolutely. And just one last tip that once you do speak for any organization, ask them to refer you. Like, what can you refer me to two other organizations that would benefit from my message that would benefit from hearing the story? Just ask because one turns into two and two turns into four. I mean, this speaking thing easily snowballs. Oh, I love that. (laughs) Great. Thank you. Great. Lorianne, thank you so much for being here. Listeners, if you found this information helpful, will you please do me a huge favor and leave us a rating and review because that is how more people find the show and how I get great guests like Lorianne and others. And also don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any new episodes. And lastly, be sure and reach out if you have questions, because I'm happy to answer your questions. Lorianne's happy to answer your questions. And together we can create that ripple effect of good in the world. Have a great week and I'll see you next time.